as most of you know, quite a bit of blame has been put on grain consumption for ill health. In reality, it's a lack of animal nutrition as well as agrochemical laden crops. The food America has been eating for the past 100, 200, 300 years hasn't really changed that much. It's mostly animal foods and mostly grains. What's changed is how we are growing the food and the high radiation environments we are in. Many of the healthiest groups of people to ever live on this planet consume grains. In fact, the longest lived people on average, the Italians, consume the most grain. Overall, you have to fix many lifestyle factors, understand what's wrong with your digestion, and you should be able to consume high quality grains. But what does high quality mean? Is it simply organic? Does it have to be sprouted, fermented, grown in top-notch soil? And there's quite a few considerations for grains and with any food really. You know, was it grown properly, free from agrochemicals? Is it a whole grain? If it's not a whole grain, when was it milled? When was it processed? The anti-nutrient components, as well as the macronutrients, as well as the micronutrient nutrition. Anti-nutrients being the negative along with those agrochemicals, the positives being the macro and micronutrient. And typically that's looking at protein to carbohydrate ratio as well as the mineral and B vitamin content. So let's go inside the store, talk a little bit more, and then we'll take a look at what the average person might have access to. Oh, I almost forgot, I gotta put my good little cuck mask on. So you guys can get these masks at wifishielding.com if you'd like to. And uh, also make sure to subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. Make sure to click that notification bell so that YouTube doesn't notify you of my videos. And uh, let's get started. We obviously don't want any chemicals in our food. Conventional, GMO, cereals, grains, using your average bakery, stands in American diet, cookies, cakes, are some of the most pesticide-laden foods you can eat. You know, when you consume a food, your goal is either macronutrient or micronutrient content. And since grains tend to favor macronutrients, there's no point in poisoning yourself when clean alternatives can be found fairly easily. You know, going organic can be a quick shortcut, but it doesn't mean the grain is perfect. You know, certain grains are grown in certain locations of the world with specific practices. So there could be pollutant nuances that are generic to that crop. And the only way to know is to really contact the manufacturer or distributor of the grain product, find out where the grain was grown, and then contact that farmer. You know, the more ingredients involved, the more difficult that can be. So it's ideal to stick to just one or two grain sources in your diet. Whether or not it's a whole grain is relevant to two things. The oxidation of the product, as well as the fiber content affecting gut motility. Most grains are processed, you know, despite you buying them in what's a seemingly raw state in the supermarket. Flour is ground up wheat seeds called berries. Barley is typically pearl that has the outer hull removed. White rice is an obvious one compared to brown rice. And oats are rarely sold in their whole form. Even steel cut oats are still you know, ground up groats. They're not whole intact in their original form. Some real health nuts do grind their own flour as well as other grains, you know, which does require a mill as well as a good source of those unprocessed grains. You know, if you taste freshly ground flour or grains, you quickly notice that difference and that translates directly to the nutrition as well. You know, you don't want something that's been sitting around for months and months and months. And oat bran is an example of, you know, what they grind off the outside. You know, if you do consume more refined grains, especially white rice, since there's little bulk, little fiber, it can sit in your stomach, in your small intestine, overfeed certain strains of bacteria, get hyperabsorbed. It can cause gut issues and dysbiosis. So you gotta try to experiment with different sources, different fiber ratios, and see what works for you. The anti-nutrients aren't that big of a deal. You know, it's more of a concern when you're consuming large amounts of uncooked grains like if you made raw cookie dough with this flour. You know, there are additional measures to reduce that. Phytic acid, soaking, fermenting, sprouting. You know, but for the most part, as long as the grain is cooked through and accompanied by quality animal nutrition, the anti-nutrients should only be worried about for people with current microbiome issues that are responding poorly to gluten. 
and most grains are fairly similar from a nutrient perspective, regardless of what you're getting, but there are some outliers. You know, oats, for instance, are higher in fat, but across the board, the main focus of grains is typically B vitamins, some plant-based minerals like copper and magnesium, and that high protein and carbohydrate intake in starch and incomplete protein. Oats are the rare exception compared to other grains where the fat content is slightly higher, but it's not really that significant. Most of this stuff, like these mixes, aren't that great. Einkorn flour is a decent choice. It's the original type of wheat, but some people actually don't respond too well because of certain compounds in einkorn flour. So, you know, I usually recommend people just try you know, organic wheat flour, organic rye flour, and that's fine. This is pretty good too, the farmer ground, because, you know, they date when they grind the flour in the mill, like January 4th, 2022 is the expiration. So you can kind of call them up and ask them when they ground it. It's much fresher than, you know, some of this stuff that's been ground in Italy or sitting around for months and months and months and months. Now there's a lot of decent pastas. All you really want to see on the ingredient list is organic durum wheat semolina. When you pay more for pasta, you're generally paying for the taste and the freshness. Like this organic whole wheat spaghetti is just organic whole durum wheat flour. This is gonna be the same thing, just durum wheat flour, except it's not whole grain. Sometimes I crave white pasta, sometimes I crave whole wheat pasta. You know, your cravings will kind of switch because your gut bacteria is telling you whether it needs more fiber or not, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, but lately it's been mostly barley, rice, and uh, potatoes. Now, I don't really buy any of this cereal, this oat stuff. You know, if your family eats slightly lower quality, then by all means, you know, I get this from my sister. Uh, we did a recipe for the chocolate chip chewy granola bars. And you know, for the average standards in American, this is miles and miles ahead of what the average person is eating. But you know, you'd be hard pressed to find really, really high quality stuff. Uh, this cream of buckwheat, is a decent example though you know it's just certified organic buckwheat so by all means one ingredient decent quality organic grain it's going to cost you though you know it's 4.49 for less than a pound you could buy meat for that price now since i've been sticking to barley lately i guess we could go take a look at that uh, but before that i was doing a lot of rice the problem i've had recently is with you know what a lot of this stuff isn't really available anymore like i have to go to a specific whole foods just to get the barley because they don't have it here. Because if you try to buy a bag of barley like this big, they'll charge you $6 for it, which is crazy compared to this. Uh, but you know, it's just quick oats, rolled oats, the processed oats. There's actually no whole grains here uh, besides the California brown basmati rice, uh, which is an example of an almost whole grain. I'm not sure if that's completely whole, but then you have the California sushi rice, which is much more whole and refined and much lower in fiber. I mean, look, it says it on here. You know, the fiber in the basmati rice is two grams and the fiber in the white rice is zero grams. So even this is relatively low fiber for a whole grain rice. They do have quite an extensive grain selection in bags, but these are kind of expensive. Uh, you know, we did a video on wild rice explaining it in depth, but look, this is $9 for eight ounces, which is kind of crazy for organic wild rice. A bunch of other stuff. I've usually been getting like this organic long grain Indian brown rice, which is $5, still a bit expensive, but you know, this bag lasts quite a bit. I switch between the white and the brown rice and they do have other things like teff, barley, all these different types of grains that you can try. You know, this is what I was talking about, the expensive bag, which is like 330, whereas you could get it for half the price in the bulk bin. So overall, you want to see what you have access to locally. I think like Whole Foods, Sprouts, an organic market that does sell these high quality grains is a great starting point. Uh, the reason we didn't speak about bread is because I don't really think it's, you know, a healthy grain unless you're making really, really, really high quality versions. Uh, we did do a video titled, Is There Healthy Bread at the Supermarket? If you want me to go in depth on that. But I just noticed that, you know, compared to these other grains, it's not nearly as fresh. Keep in mind, you know, you take the wheat berries, you grind it up, you ferment it, you bake it, and then it's a cooked food that sits around for a while. At least when you buy these grains and you prepare them fresh, you know, it's not high histamine, it doesn't cause issues. You know, it's more of a, a whole alive food. Uh, so that'll be it for today, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or want any clarifications. Uh, you know, the overall summary is, 
can get the highest quality organic grains as possible, stick to single ingredients, and then pertaining to choosing which grain you should be consuming, whether it's rice or barley, wheat, pasta, whatever, try it, see how your stomach responds, and chances are if you do have an issue, it's either pollutants in the grain or you have some type of stomach dysbiosis. You really don't want to look at anti-nutrients as a specific problem because anti-nutrients really only rear their ugly heads when consuming large amounts of like vegetables, nuts, and, and raw seed type stuff. Uh, so thanks again for joining me guys and I'll see you for tomorrow's video.